Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you click the link and you're expecting to see me put my VP9 through a torture test, sorry to disappoint you guys, I'm not going to. It was absolutely 100% clickbait, but it got you here, so please hear me out, all right? Now this video might resemble uh, somewhat of a rant for the next couple of minutes, but it's concerning torture tests. From my whole adult professional life at work, I have been around precision measurement equipment as well as precision machinery such as lathes and mills to create products in the orthopedic industry. Never once in my life have I ever heard a manufacturer suggest that you test the durability and reliability of these machines by not lubing them, by not providing the correct air pressure, uh, by not making sure that the ways and the, the rails were clean. So these torture tests where people put guns through hell they cram mud, dirt, sand, silt, grime into the rails of these guns and then wonder why they don't work is mind-blowing to me. Think about this. If you didn't put oil in your truck, if you didn't lube the chassis and the wheel bearings, it isn't going to run and drive right, guys. It's not. Don't be surprised if it breaks down. Now, could it run longer than another one in that condition? Sure, but you can't expect it to run without doing the proper maintenance on it, all right? That's what ticks me off about gun torture tests. People have these expectations that, well, gun X went through it and did fine, so gun Y should work. It's dumb, it doesn't make any sense. Under normal circumstances, normal circumstances is how machines should be tested. When I say normal circumstances, proper lube, proper cleaning. If they survive and if they thrive and make it, outside of those parameters, fine. But listen, you are not, as a civilian, gonna fight somebody and fall in a mud puddle. You're not gonna be wading a creek or an ocean and come out and present your weapon and have to shoot somebody. It's not going to happen, guys. It's not. All torture tests do is provide entertainment, to be honest, that's it. They provide entertainment. I don't put stock in torture tests. I really don't because, again, a piece of equipment, especially precision equipment like a gun, is designed to function a certain way. When you pull the, the manufacturer's specs out of that and you introduce uh, high levels of water and grit and sand, you're changing the dynamic of how that precision piece of equipment should work, all right? If a, an operator gets into a bad situation, mud, water, and grime, and his gun works, great, but realistically, it shouldn't. It shouldn't work. Now those are the facts, all right? My opinion on torture tests, I don't put a lot of stock into them. I, I cringe when I see some of the things people do to their guns. To me, it's absolutely ridiculous and it just doesn't make sense, especially for civilians, all right? Lube your guns, clean your guns, take care of your guns, play the percentages and don't use the exception to make the rule, okay? I bought a VP9, I bought Glocks in the past, M&P, SIGs, different guns because I know they're going to run for everything that I'm personally going to need them to do, all right? I don't need to throw my gun in mud to make sure it's reliable. I'm going to take it to the range, I'm going to put hundreds of rounds through it, aluminum case, brass, hollow points. I'm going to go a little while without cleaning it, but then I'm going to clean it and lube it. I'm going to see how it runs under maybe a little bit adverse circumstances, but I'm not going to abuse my machinery and expect it to work properly. I'm just not gonna do it. So, into the rant, guys. I uh, hope you can appreciate what I'm trying to get across here. And uh, take care, guys. Be safe and take care of those guns.